before I actually get into this story, I'm going to play some audio for you. And it's going to sound kind of it's going to sound wild. And it is wild. But I'm going to let the audio play for you. It's about a, excuse me, about a minute long. And then I'll go into the details of what you heard. Okay, so you just heard that one minute audio right there. Now, many like if you if anyone works inside of a police station where they're getting a call like that, of course, they're going to wonder what in the world is going on. They might think someone's doing a prank call or a crank call and they're not going to take it seriously. Luckily, in this woman's case, who you see on the right, whose name is Young On, luckily, her call was taken seriously. Now, what you just heard was a woman making a very serious distress call to 911 using her Apple Watch because her husband, who's the guy on the left, whose name is Che Kyung On, buried her alive. That's why she was sounding like that on that call, because she couldn't talk. She was buried alive, so she couldn't get her words out. So all she could do was make noises and yell. He probably, I don't know if, I don't know if he taped her mouth or whatever, because it sounded like he might have taped her mouth where she couldn't talk, maybe tied her up where she couldn't move or make, you know, make any um, words. So all she could make was noises. Now, luckily for her, she had on her Apple Watch and she was able to dial 911. And also lucky for her, she wasn't buried deep enough where she would have lost the connection. So she, this woman is extremely lucky to be alive. But now I'm going to go ahead and get into the article itself. Young On, age 42, who's the woman, was allegedly attacked by her husband, Che Kyung On, age 53, who was the man on the left, in her home on October 16th after they spoke about their ongoing divorce and finances. So now we kind of have a motive of, or at least a launch pad of where this whole thing started at. Che allegedly punched Young multiple times before, before binding her eyes, hands, and body with duct tape. Before Young before Young was driven into the woods near Lacey to be buried, she managed to contact 911 and send a notification to her emergency contacts using her Apple Watch. So this woman was almost buried alive by her husband when she made this call. So it sounds to me like maybe at the time he was maybe digging the ditch in which she put him in which he put her in or was prepared to put her in but she was able to dial 911 or maybe push a, an emergency button cuz you know most you know phones and devices have emergency buttons to call them so she so she used her, her due diligence she she wanted to survive and luckily for her she did the distressing call recorded Sounds of young screaming and sobbing. Although she was bound and gagged and unable to articulate the words, the dispatcher was able to send officers to the home. I'm going to get help started for you. Hold on for a second. This is the dispatcher says in the recording. The dispatcher reassures young that help is on the way as she stays on the line. The recording then ends when a police officer arrives. However, Shay had already broken her watch with a hammer before loading her into a van and driving into the woods to bury her. So this all happened at the home before he was getting ready to go out there to bury her. Young told police that Shay stabbed her in the chest 
and placed her in a shallow grave. She managed to keep dirt off of her face by wiggling around as she laid in the grave for hours. After tearing off the duct tape, she ran for about 30 minutes until she found a house to plead for help. Young reportedly shouted, my husband is trying to kill me, help me, after a sheriff's deputy arrived. On November 1st, Che pled not guilty to charges of first degree attempted murder, first degree ki- first degree kidnapping and first degree domestic violence assault. He was booked into Thurston County Jail where he is being held without bail. Che is scheduled back in court on November 16th. This is a wild story right here. This sounds like something straight out of a horror movie. I've always said that one of my biggest fears is being buried alive. Because imagine you're like in a small space, you can't move, you're probably, you know, duct tape or, you know, uh, taped up, tied up, and you can barely move. It kind of reminds me of, for those of you who've seen it, uh, the movie Kill Bill Volume 2, where they buried her inside of the box and she had to punch her way out of the box. Now, we know that's just a movie and whatnot, but still, to be buried alive is one of the scariest things because it's like, it's just you in a small space in the dark and you can't see a thing. That is some scary shit right there. And this woman went through it. This guy literally, they say he stabbed her, tied her up, took her out to some area and began to, you know, and buried her alive. But luckily for her, she was able to make that call before her husband got wind of what she was doing and broke her Apple watch. And, you know, she's alive. If she didn't have that watch on, she most likely would have been a dead woman. And this, and like I said, it seems like the launch pad of this whole situation, it sounds like it says they was going through a divorce and some finances. So now we kind of see where this pretty much kicked off from and where it's stemming from. This guy is absolutely insane again because he pled not guilty to all the charges that he was hit with, even though he's very, very, very guilty of all the charges he's been hit with. This guy tried to kill his wife multiple times, one by stabbing her. But I don't know that they specify where she got stabbed at. Then she then he tried to bury her. Like, come on, you are guilty as all hell. And I hope that when he does get found guilty on all charges, that they throw the book at his ass. Now, this right here, I don't know if it's going to get well, shoot for all those first degree charges. He might get a life sentence. And he should. That's crazy. But before I end this video off, I have to ask the commonality question. Is the AAPI going to talk about this? You know, they always have something to say when it comes to black people. But are they going to say something about this? I find it very interesting that a lot of those quote unquote anti agent hate crime pages, they slip when they are in the wrong or when there's crimes committed against themselves as far as proximity goes. And, you know, they always like to talk about black on black crime, this and black on black crime, that. Well, here's a story where it's clearly Asian on Asian crime. And this time it's a domestic incident because it's between husband and wife. And it's crazy because this guy apparently was trying to get rid of his wife all because maybe she wanted a divorce or or maybe with some financial things going on her. And I'm not entirely sure. Well. Where he's headed, I'm almost certain that a divorce is definitely inevitable.